<laughs> Welcome to Southeast Iowa Solar Haven. So you're probably wondering what I'm doing with those. And you're probably wondering what they're for. Well, we're going to find out in this episode of Southeast Ohio Solar Haven once again when I go to fix or repair our broken microwave oven. So, what I have here is a Breville microwave oven. It's all kinds of fancy stuff. You can actually adjust the power pretty easy. It quit heating up, so I had to take it apart and test it. It's unplugged. It's been unplugged for about three or four days. Let me get this case cracked back open again, and I'll show you what I had to test to find out what was wrong. <laughs> inside of a microwave oven so once you crack open your microwave oven you're going to see this component this component this component and you're going to have your digital control board now this is your transformer high voltage transformer it stepped it up from 120 volt to around 2000 plus volts usually around 2200 volt range and then you got your starting capacitor which helps um, the surge and whatever else in these microwave ovens I will be replacing this today because right here which plugs into here and goes to here is what they call a high voltage it's a um, high voltage DC rectifying diode that's what blew up in this it's bad and I'll show you in the video later how to check for this and at the same time I'm going to go ahead and replace this capacitor because usually when these go out it can hurt these or these are starting to fail because of that nine times out of ten well I'm not going to say nine times out of ten I'm just going to say most of the time it's not your magnetron if it, it's not heating properly because you can take and unplug the magnetron Here's the plugs that go to the magnetron. And how you check your magnetron is take a DC volt, take a voltmeter, like I got right here. And you want to put it basically on a diode checker. It's not a diode, but the biggest thing is, is to check each one of these terminals here and when you check the terminals which this is hard to do one-handed I'm sorry you want to take your meter here you want a meter in between these legs right here and here I don't hear a beep which tells me there's no short okay and then if you get a short from any of these pegs right here say you uh, put your terminal right here this is hard to do I'm sorry I got to stand with me right now you take them put your terminal here and take your other lead here and ground it the case like I got right there if that shows a short or is it open that means the magnetron's bad but I done checked this diode capacitor and found out they were bad. So let's get back to it. Let me install these two components here. It's not hard. Um, you'll, I'll show you here in the video what it looks like installed. So once after you installed your capacitor back in, your diode will bolt right down here to ground and plug into this capacitor. And then you hook your appropriate wires back up and install your capacitor back in the same way it was. And then when you're done, you come here and install the plug to your magnetron. The magnetron is a device that heats your food inside your microwave. So anyway, if you ever have any issues with a microwave, you need to check this diode. There's a fuse right here. That goes to your high voltage transformer. You you want to open this up and check the fuse. These usually just unplug right off the top of them. 
that fuse was okay inside there make sure you check all your fusing on top on your input side I done check this with a voltmeter make sure all your fuses are good and everything uh, other than that if it's not heating after that and you're probably going to look at this and something maybe internally has went bad but most of the time these don't go bad very often and I'll be right back and I'll show you how to test one of these diodes the proper way so we're back here on how to check these diodes and I've done set this up that way you can see how to check these diodes um, I put my meter here on the voltage scale I zero it out and then I'm going to check with a 9 volt battery with this right here I'm going to check my voltage with my 9 volt battery and you see right there I got 9.18 so what I'm going to do is is I'm going to take and excuse me check one take one of these right here plug this in here it shouldn't let power through at this point so when I put this I'll take and put this on the positive side and it's very low it's like very yeah it's 33 millivolt it, that's about right now when I flip this around we should get I'll flip around to the other end and then when I flip it around because the way I'm testing it, we should get 5 volts plus. And there it is. 5 plus volts. If and when you're checking your diodes, and if you go and turn it around, and like right here, I got 5.5 volts coming through. If you flip it back around on the other end and check it, like I'm doing here, and you get 5 volt plus, that means that diode's bad. Or if you don't get any voltage whatsoever coming through either side, it could be shorted open. Either way, that's how the diode's bad. I was going to show you what the bad diode did, but I incidentally threw it in the trash, so it's gone. I apologize. <clears throat> but that's how you test these diodes. So, about four days after I was uh, sh shooting the video on the uh, microwave diodes and, and the capacitor and stuff, and of course inside the microwave you've seen this little contraption, which is called a magnetron. And this little contraption is what heats your food. Well, guess what? The magnetron was bad inside too, so apparently... The diode shorting out or this shorting out made the diode go bad this you know doing the proper test procedures on it you know you, you take you go from here to case to see if there's a short it this this darn thing it never showed any signs of being bad at all and uh, I replaced it with another one and the microwave just worked perfectly fine so apparently if your diode is shorted out sometimes these will short your diodes out yeah who knows but either either way I had to come back to this video uh, this is like four days later because I had to order one of these online and I, I picked this magnetron up for 60 bucks uh, online. And in fact, this is the old Magnetron. You can't even tell or anything wrong with it. The new Magnetron, it's the same model number and everything. So, with the exception of some batch coding numbers right here where it has the 5H20, that's a batch code number. But the model number and this right here is the same. So, those are usually the batch codes for. Uh, them making it or 
a time frame when they make these or whatever. But anyway, yeah, I mean, that was a simple fix for the microwave. Um, you know, like I said, I didn't want to go out and spend another three or four hundred dollars on some high end microwave. Uh, my wife likes that microwave, so you know, it was just easier to spend 70 80 bucks and fix it than go searching for another microwave that she likes or I like or anything like that. So, yeah, uh, just replacing that. I'm sorry I, I didn't show any more of uh, the disassembly other than, you know, most of the time you'll have a screw at one screw. There'll be three screws in these, and then they'll have a little top plate on here with a thermistor switch on top. But they're easy to replace. Uh, but that was the uh, issue, one of the biggest issues, what when heat is this. So... That's what a magnetron looks like. If anybody hasn't seen one up close, you know, there's nothing to really be seen other than some heat seek pins. There's two magnets. Uh, I remember how these work, and how, uh, uh, I know how they work. I just can't remember the exact wording, you know. But uh, that's how you heat your food in a microwave oven. This little microwave gun because that technically that's what it is is a microwave gun and the microwaves are disper dispersed throughout the microwave in order to cook your food so anyway once again that's a microwave repair i'm sorry uh you know i didn't show the replacement of this but i'm gonna go ahead and tell people when you, if, if you use common sense, you look inside one of these microwave ovens and you think this is bad, you'll see the two screw holes or the, you know, they'll, they'll be mounted. Well, this particular one anyway will be mounted like this. There's, you know, several ways. They'll be plugged in here. You unplug it and there'll be a thermistor or a thermal switch. And they'll be probably mounted on a piece of metal that'll be screwed to it because right here is where the screw marking is. These are not hard to replace, people. And I'm not, you know, going to sit here and go through a step by step process because it's common sense. Common sense, and you can fix these yourself, people. Anyway, I want to thank you for watching. Click like and subscribe, and maybe more repair work comes up that I have to fix around the house that might be helpful to people. Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Later on.